you guys get the uh there it goes <laughs> all right welcome everyone to the bodc multifamily impact fund webinar i'm gary lipsky president of break of day capital i'm uh, happy you You've joined us tonight. It's been uh, almost uh, a little over nine months, actually, since our, our last deal. So we're, we're very excited to um, share with you our latest opportunity and our, our, our fund that we're launching. Um, we've, we've just really stayed true to our criteria. Um, it's been a long nine months, but uh, we're, we're excited to, to share this with you. So a little bit of housekeeping to start off. Um, this is neither an offer to sell nor a solicitation of an offer to buy the securities described herein. An offering may only be made by a private placement memorandum to which this investment summary is attached as an exhibit. You should read the private placement memorandum, including each of its exhibits in their entirety in order to understand fully all of the implications and risks of the offering of securities to which it relates. An investment in the property should be made only after careful review of the private placement memorandum. This investment summary includes forecasts, projections, and other predictive statements based on assumptions and expectations made by the manager in light of currently available information, historical property performance, industry trends, market conditions, and information provided by the seller. This property's Actual performance may differ from these projections based on factors outside of the manager's control. Moreover, past performance is no guarantee of future results. Therefore, no guarantee is presented or implied as to the accuracy of specific forecasts, projections, or predictive statements contained herein. All right, so a little bit about us, if, if you're not that familiar with uh, Break of Day Capital, we focus on acquiring underperforming multifamily properties in high growth markets in the Southwest by implementing strong uh, repositioning strategies and best in class asset management to maximize the value for all stakeholders, our investors, our residents, everyone. Um, we were recognized by the American Apartment Association as the best real estate syndication company last year. Uh, they have over 139,000 members. So we were uh, very honored to get that award. We've selectively, excuse me, selectively acquired 1300 units with a total value of 250 million in the last four years. We currently own seven multifamily properties in Arizona totaling 972 units and uh, over $182 million assets under management right now. We've delivered investor returns that significantly exceeded pro forma in all previous full cycle exits. And I think this, uh, this is really important for you to understand what we're about. Our mission is to provide passive investors with superior risk adjusted returns with the highest level of transparency and fiduciary responsibility while improving the quality of life and community for our residents. And our core values are integrity, transparency, communication, diligence, and Kaizen. Uh, a lot of times I get asked what Kaizen means and that's consistent improvement. And if we're doing consistent improvement just a little bit every single day, that adds up to a huge improvement over the course of the year. And that's, as a team, we, we look to do that um, behind the scenes for our properties, everything that we do, we're always looking to constantly improve how we're doing things. So a little bit about me, um, been a real estate investor since 2002. I've invested in over 3000 units over that time. Uh, been an entrepreneur for most of my life. Uh, I have 30 years of, of, uh, operational experience. I wrote the uh, best-selling book, Best in Class, and I co-founded the uh, Asset Management Summit. In a previous life, I uh, co-founded uh, ARC, uh, a company um, that worked with uh, at-risk youth and, and worked with 9,000 students daily throughout Southern California. And we had over 700 employees and 700 independent contractors when I, when I sold that company. And I also founded the nonprofit Core Educational Services. I want to pass it over to Joe and let him introduce himself. Hi, I'm Joseph Fang. 
Director of Investor Relations. I have a professional background in the traditional investment management industry, having spent over a decade, five years with a hedge fund in New York City, and then seven years with a global institutional fund manager in Los Angeles. I've also been an active owner and operator of various residential real estate from single family to small multifamily for over 20 plus years, and uh, have also invested passively in close to 60 commercial real estate syndications uh, in various food groups all up and down the capital stack. Eric? Hey, I'm Eric Thunberg. Um, I have 10 years experience in institutional real estate investment, spanning acquisitions, asset management, credit, credit uh, commercial real estate brokerage, brokerage uh, and underwriting uh, across many different asset classes. Um, most recently, I was with a large publicly traded REIT focused on uh, medical office acquisitions and development and a private equity firm that uh, made core investments. Uh, and my educational background is I have a bachelor's in finance from St. Joseph's University and a master's in real estate from Georgetown. Thanks, guys. Real estate is a team sport. Um, so not only uh, does Joe and, and, and Eric play a, a huge role in break of day capital, but we also have uh, Jacqueline. Um, for those who have invested with us before, you, you've, I'm sure you've worked with her as far as you know, wiring money to our accounts and helping her helping you with paperwork. Um, behind the scenes, we have Linda, who's, uh, you know, done a lot of research for us and, and worked on some special projects. So they are also are integral to the success of our company. Um, we also, uh, Neil Bookspan is our transactional attorney at Jaberg and Wilk and Rob Aronoff uh, is the CEO of Scotia Management. That's the property management company that we uh, have been working with uh, in, in Tucson. So they manage uh, five of our properties right now and they'll manage our, our, our latest uh, opportunity as well. One of our secret sauces is, is asset management. Uh, I alluded, it, alluded to it uh, earlier. Um, as I said earlier, I, I wrote the uh, Amazon bestselling book, uh, Best in Class. Um, I also uh, host the Real Estate Investor Podcast, where we've had over 150 real estate experts come on. And, you know, asset management is not property management. I think a lot of investors get confused. And, and that's the, it's a critical differentiator in delivering strong results. Uh, a lot of operators focus on acquisitions and capital raising, but overlook uh, asset management. And um, I think, uh, you know, our expertise allows us to, to get a few extra percentage points on occupancy, uh, we're able to uh, execute our business plan faster. And that all just goes to the bottom line. So a little bit extra effort divided by the cap rate could be millions of dollars in our investors' pockets. So um, asset management is our, our key differentiator. I'm gonna pass it off to Eric and he could talk about uh, our market expertise. Sure, so uh, we're focused uh, primarily in Arizona, Phoenix and Tucson, where we have seven properties, as uh, Gary mentioned. Um, what separates us from the competition is that we really count on our relationships with uh, local brokers, lenders, property managers. Um, so that helps us get a leg up in terms of knowing what's going on in the market, uh, local expertise, knowing the news, knowing our, uh, where rents are and what expenses are in an area. Um, and as we've acquired, built up scale uh, in Arizona, uh, that's helped us uh, um, compound um, our, our experience and knowledge in the market. So like I said, we, we know what things should cost and operationally, we know what expenses should be uh, when acquiring and managing properties. Uh, market opportunities. So the reasons that we like investing in the Southwest, and particularly in particular Arizona, uh, is that it's a landlord and business friendly state. So uh, from a real estate perspective, property taxes are generally lower than many other states, uh, and also it's landlord friendly uh, from a legal standpoint. We also like that uh, the markets of Phoenix and Tucson have, have significant population base and population growth. So 
uh, it gives us really good insight into uh, the market. There's good pricing information and the markets are competitive. So uh, we know that there's going to be competitive uh, competition to buy properties, but we also know there's going to be competition uh, to buy a property when we go to sell it on the exit. Um, we also like that there's really strong job growth in these markets. With that comes wage growth. And another competitive advantage to Arizona is that there's a lower cost of living. So people are moving here and therefore it's another reason that we want to invest, invest in multifamily housing uh, here in Arizona. Uh, a little bit about Phoenix. Uh, it's the largest uh, city, fifth largest city in the US of a population just under 5 million. Aside from it being a beautiful place to live, it's also the home to many major employers, including several Fortune 500 companies. Uh, a few of those include PetSmart, PetSmart uh, Republic Services, uh, major health institutions such as Banner Health. Um, but from an investment standpoint, we also like the climate that uh, such that property taxes are, are capped uh, at a 5% increase annually. Uh, so that helps from an operating expense standpoint. Uh, we also have a favorable market for uh, insurance, so we don't have any perils to worry about there. And as I mentioned before, um, population growth has been really robust, 20, almost 21% growth in the past decade. Cost of living is well below the U.S. average, uh, as our, as I mentioned, you know, rents are below uh, market here as well. And then the unemployment rate is really strong at 2.7% compared to the national average of 3.6%. And a little bit about Tucson. It's the 33rd largest city in the US. Um, it is the, the second largest city uh, in Arizona with a population of just about over 1 million people. Again, it's another beautiful place to live uh, with a lot of major employers, such as uh, Raytheon, IBM. We also, of course, we have the University of Arizona, and uh, we have the Davis Monthan Air Force Base. So a lot of major economic drivers down in Tucson. Um, again, population growth has been tremendous. We've seen 15% growth in the past decade. Uh, strong, strong rent growth and market market occupancy has been very strong at uh, ninety two point six percent. We also feel that it's an overlooked market, and we've been able to take advantage of that uh, based on our track record in Tucson. Um, you know, we've we've had some very successful exits and continue to see continue to see a lot of opportunity in Tucson. Uh, so, you know, taking advantage of um, lower lower uh, rental prices and a lower rent to income ratio in the market, which uh, benefits uh, not only tenants, but also investors such as ourselves. All right, thanks, Eric. So um, our value add strategy isn't that different from a, a lot of others. Uh, I think what kind of separates us is, is, is having a vision. Um, we've done a couple of adaptive use um, projects where we bought uh, student housing, we converted to multifamily. We, you know, we, we, we heard the numbers from the broker, we saw the site, it was just an easy conversion. Um, that property, we bought it at, I think it was like 52% occupied um, in the winter. And by the summer, we got it to over 90%. So um, that property, we're actually uh, refining out 100% of the money to investors. Uh, a little over two years, and we'll sell at a more opportune time. Um, you know, we when we walk a property, we can instantly see what what needs to happen. We know the numbers. We you know we've done this time and time again, um, and um, you know so it's just it's just you know hitting our doubles, triples, you know home runs when you get them. Um, but you know we do the exterior facelift. Uh, that's an easy win. We beautify the property, and I'll show you some examples coming up. And that just changes the whole feel of the property. When you work on the exterior, residents feel more proud to live there. We're getting a lot more traffic. Then we can kind of focus on the interior renovations. Um, and, you know, it's, it's flooring, it's countertops, uh, new appliances, uh, washer dryers if possible, um, two-tone paint. Uh, so just 
you know, basic stuff that goes a very long way. We also add amenity upgrades and, and it doesn't have to cost us a lot of money. A dog park with toys and everything could be $15,000 and that's an amenity that residents love. Um, we typically have to renovate the pool area each time um, and, and add new colorful furniture. We upgrade the fitness center, uh, playground if need be, and we tackle deferred maintenance. This is a property we bought at the end of 2021. Uh, it was called Ironwood Apartments. So you could see that picture in the top left. So when I when I heard the rents, uh, what they were charging, and we knew that area, and they were hundreds of dollars below the market. And I looked at the property, I knew instantaneously that you know there's a ton of meat on on, on the bone here on, on this property. Um, we didn't have to spend a ton of money. And you look at the bottom bottom row. You know, a nice paint job, new signage, a cool name to the property, uh, nice new cool furniture, some landscaping. You know, we didn't have much to work with in the bottom right hand corner, but, you know, a little AstroTurf uh, and some nice new rock and boom, they, we've really changed that property. And a lot of residents stayed uh, versus moving out with a, with a higher rent because they knew they were getting uh, a quality place to live. And, and if they were going to look elsewhere, they knew that... Um, you know, there was a lot of value to be living there at the, at the rent that we were charging. So we, we try to create win-win uh, scenarios for uh, our investors and for our residents. We want to create a safer, nicer place for them to, to live in. And you see below um, the first, you know, column on the left, the interior renovation, uh, repainting the cabinets, uh, new appliances, um, the second and third column is from uh, Icon on Park, a property we took over. So um, you'll see the two-tone paint. Um, where the woman is standing in the top middle column, we raised that ceiling about, uh, I think, about 18 inches. And it just made a huge difference. You can't really tell in the bottom picture below it, but it just opened it up. Um, and it made a huge difference. And then on the right, we... We uh, opened up the clubhouse, new paint, obviously, put in a, an, uh, an island and a kitchen for residents to, uh, to use if they want. They could uh, rent out the space. We can hold uh, meetings and events in there. So just the really beautifying the property goes uh, a long way. What I want to do is I hand over to Joe and talk about some of our historical highlights. So a sponsor's track record is probably one of the most critical factors that uh, an investor will have to consider when evaluating deals. So I'd like to give you some of the highlights of our track record. So we, um, to date, we've had three full cycle exits averaging a 61% IRR. But I'd like to caveat that by saying that that is a, a combination of favorable market conditions and operational expertise, which we'll, I'll get into a little bit more in the next slide. Uh, we've done quarter billion in real estate transactions. And as, as Gary uh, mentioned earlier, uh, we have uh, done two adaptive reuse projects where uh, I, we would consider them um, uh, projects with um, a much heavier lift than what we what we're normally used to doing. And I um, in one in one uh, uh, deal, we took a student housing with low occupancy during COVID and turning into multifamily by partitioning uh, units uh, to make more units, uh, bring additional income. And then in another project, we actually took a, a garden level office space and turned it into multifamily by adding an additional 60 new units, uh, new construction. So uh, those are those are two uh, slightly different projects, um, but we're very proud of those. And to date, we've um, uh, distributed over $23 million to our investors and we have also never issued capital calls, nor do we plan on doing so in the future. And we're very proud of that. Full cycle performance. So I, uh, the three deals that we've gone full cycle, um, if you look on the slide here, uh, you can see a little bit um, uh, in greater detail. Uh, but Midtown on second, uh, we actually achieved a 31% IRR compared to the projected of 14%. Uh, East 3434, we did 50% IRR uh, as compared to a 15% IRR projected. And then finally, Midtown on Seneca, that was a whopping 101% IRR as compared to an 18% projected IRR. And that gave us a, 
an, a blended average of 61% RR versus 16% projected IRR. And these returns are net to investors. Portfolio. Uh, this is a look of our current portfolio. So we currently have seven properties uh, that we own and, and manage. Uh, six of those are in Tucson, and one of, and one of them is in uh, Phoenix, greater Phoenix area. And as you can see on the screen here, um, uh, there's a, uh, while we focus on class and B workforce housing, uh, there is a, a, a variety of properties, um, each, each one unique, uh, each one with the um, uh, value at business plan. Um, but they range between, you know, as little as 72 units and as big as 248 units uh, and, and everything in between. And the purchase price between $8 million to as much as $59 million. So why invest in multifamily now? Well, I, I'm going to be a little bit biased, but I've been in multifamily for many, many years, and I, I've seen how it does during recessions, so I can certainly speak uh, from my own personal experience, but it's because it's recession resistant while being an inflation hedge. And if you look on the graph here, uh, we pulled this from actually from Origin Investments out of Chicago, but they did a study and it showed that private real estate uh, actually outperformed safe havens such as a two year uh, US Treasury during the last three major recessions. So I thought that was pretty amazing. Um, you know, it, it's a great inflation hedge. I, I, I don't think that's a secret to anybody. The Fed is going to continue to print money when it, whenever there's trouble. And for us to, you know, uh, preserve our wealth, we kind of don't have a choice but to invest in hard assets. And we really like to express that view um, through workforce housing. Uh, there is plenty of studies out there that show that there's a significant shortage of workforce housing and Class B and C workforce housing is in that is a prime candidate in that particular asset type. So why the fund? Well, you're going to continue to leverage the expertise of us as a trusted operator. We have very stringent acquisition criteria, conservative underwriting, and we have a track record of success. But we want to package it in a way that reduces the dispersion and stabilize the cash flow for investors. Always trying to find ways to add value, as what uh, Gary alluded to earlier, Kaizen. Uh, we think that the fund model is efficient. Uh, you, you, you only have to sign one subs subscription agreement and you're going to get one K1, but you're going to have exposure. Your money is going to be spread across multiple properties. And you're going to get the same benefits as if uh, in, in the traditional model where we we're doing single asset syndications. Uh, the, the investment is backed by uh, hard assets, so there's always uh, a priority for capital preservation. And you're going to get the same tax benefits, uh, the cost segregation studies that we're going to perform on all these properties, and then, uh, and then uh, be able to um, put that in the, in the bonus depreciation um, and uh, also, uh, we're going to um, offer a special to investors who invest with us in the fund uh, in the first 60 days by not by waiving the uh, fund management fee. Fund criteria. So this is not really all that different uh, from our single asset syndications in the past. We're going to continue to focus on buying in the Southwest growth markets. We're targeting properties 100 units and greater for economies of scale. Uh, we really like uh, uh, 1970s and newer vintage. Uh, the product type that we're focused on are class B and C, but we're also adding class A, because uh, I, I think that as we get into uh, the more mature part of the, the, the cycle, business cycle, real estate cycle, we also want to focus more on cash flow. And uh, with that, um, we're also going to be looking at reducing our leverage. Uh, so our loan, the targeted loan value, loan to value ranges between 60 to 75%. And you're going to continue to get the same cost segregation bonus depreciation in the 40 to 80% range. Fund terms. We're going to be uh, targeting between 75 to $100 million uh, 
in, in assets. Uh, that translates into about a 30 to $50 million raise for this fund. Uh, we're targeting a, a three, to acquire three to five uh, different properties. The fund life will be approximately four to six years. Uh, there will be three different asset uh, investment costs, which I'll get into in the next slide. And this will be a 506C offering. So this is going to be available only to accredited investors. So please make sure you get your third-party verification letter ready. Um, I will uh, send out a template for you if, if you need one. The targeted returns will be between 13 to 18% IRR, and that translates into roughly 16 to 22% on an average analyzed rate of return basis. And that also means it's a 1.7x to a 2.2x equity multiple over a five-year hold. Uh, the, type, the, the types of funds that we can accept are cash, self-directed self IRA, solo 401k, or EQRP. Uh, in a nutshell, this is a closed-end fund uh, with, a, with up to a one-year funding period. Capital will be called as needed, um, and uh, be prepared that we could call up to 100% of the capital uh, upon commitment. Uh, investment classes, so there'll be three options for our investors. There's a class A preferred equity. Uh, and for those of you who don't know what preferred equity is uh, versus common equity, preferred equity basically just means that you're still an owner, but you sit higher up on the capital stack. So you have lower risk than common equity. But the trade-off is that uh, the preferred return is fixed at 10%. So that means that there's no additional upside beyond the 10%. And you should expect to receive the distributions on uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, we ex we expect to start distributions about one month after closing. Class B and C are common equity. Uh, the class B uh, uh, share class comes with seven percent preferred return, and it, then it's a seventy thirty split in favor of the investors to a fifteen percent IRR, and then it's a fifty fifty split thereafter. Uh, distributions will be uh, will be made out on a quarterly basis, and we expect to start distributions roughly uh, within six months after closing. And it will come with a bonus depreciation between forty to eighty percent. And finally, we have a Class C Common Equity Institutional Class. Uh, you're going to get uh, better economics with this class, but the minimum is also a lot greater at one million dollars. The preferred rate is 8%. It's an 80-20 split in favor of the investors, and there's, a, there's no additional waterfall beyond that. Quarterly distributions, and again, same bonus depreciation, uh, 40 to 80%. The fund timeline. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, we're, talking, we're targeting between four to six years, and these are the four different phases. During the acquisition phase, uh, during the investment period of up to one year or uh, up to a maximum of uh, acquiring five assets, uh, we're going to go ahead and close the fund, whichever happens sooner. Shortly after acquisition, we're going to be uh, implementing our business plan, uh, the value add strategy that Gary mentioned earlier during our renovation phase. And then follow, following the renovation phase, we have uh, what we call the st stabilization phase where we will fine tune, you know, once we get the assets to st stabilization, we're gonna fine tune uh, using various techniques, um, try to get squeeze uh, um, the, the last dollar out of the deal, um, trying to uh, increase NOI and, and occupancy and, and just basically get the properties ready uh, for, for sale. Um, and then uh, during our disposition phase, um, we're gonna be paying close attention to the market and, and exit at the most op optimal time to maximize return to our, to our investors. I also want to note that um, we do not intend on uh, reinvesting the cash uh, uh, from dispositions. We intend on making distributions, uh, return of your capital plus profits once we exit the property. Okay. Back over to Eric. All right, so this is 
going to be our first acquisition in the fund. It's the place. It's called the Place of Spanish Trails, which is a uh, 1979 built uh, garden style apartment in, down in Tucson, roughly nine miles east of downtown and less than a quarter mile south of Broadway. So we have uh, a B minus uh, asset and a B location. There's good re retail nearby. Um, it's 256 units, uh, 80, just under 89% occupied. Um, so uh, I'll tell you a little bit more here about the, the particulars. So uh, our purchase price going in is 34.5 million, which equates to just under 135,000 per unit. Uh, we are getting quotes right now from Fannie and Freddie for uh, low leverage at about 66% loan to value. Again, we're looking at about a five year hold. Um, so there are really four uh, value add levers on this property. Um, so the first being that of the 256 units, uh, 101 of those units are classic. So we're going to implement about a $2.15 million renovation budget with 1.23 million of that focused on classic unit renovations. So that equates to about $12,000 per unit. So we're gonna, we're gonna uplift the classic units to, uh, to market. Um, the other value add lever we have here is an operating cost. So uh, we've already walked the property. We've done most of our due diligence on it. We, we know that the water bills here are extremely high. And given we have expertise in Tucson, we can look at the expenses of competing properties and see that there, there's, uh, there's value to be made here by reducing the water bill. And the way we're going to do that is by uh, uh, inputting uh, low flow toilets uh, throughout the, the, the uh, apartment complex. Um, the other thing is that we are going to be purchasing this property at roughly 20% below uh, uh, what where market was 15 months ago. That's largely driven by uh, rises in, in uh, interest rates. So this is a really good chance for us to buy right at this time. Um, and then the last thing is that once we've uh, gone through our renovation budget and enhanced uh, the aesthetics of the community and uh, upfitted the classic units, there's going to be the opportunity to uh, boost occupancy uh, from its current spot of about 89%. Um, another thing of note is that this property is located within five miles of three properties we, we currently own. So it's going to be very easy for us, uh, for our property management to, to, uh, to enhance the, the asset and also for us to keep tabs on it. Um, and, you know, there's, there's nothing really significantly wrong with the property. The previous owner put in about $3 million in the capital uh, expenditures and improvements on this property. This is just an opportunity for us to come in and enhance it, but, uh, enhance the, the asset uh, by pulling on the levers that I just mentioned. You know, as mentioned um, previously, uh, we want to make an impact not only to our investors, but also to our residents. And and you can uh, see it clearly stated in our the objective of this fund is that we do want to make an impact. And so a portion of Break of Day Capital's corporate profits will be donated to charities that we support. And these are just some examples. Testimonials. Um, I'm just going to read you one, if you don't mind, from Stephen. I've invested in seven of Break of Day Capital's deals and have been very happy with the results. I can always rely on Gary and the team to respond quickly and provide me with all of the information I need. I have complete confidence in, that Gary and the Break of Day Capital team will continue to provide me with the information, diligence, and returns that I have experienced. So. We really appreciate feedback, good and bad, from all our investors. And especially uh, when it's very constructive criticism, you know, we do take it to heart and uh, always wanting to make improvements, you know, consistent with one of our core values, which is to constantly make improvements. Pr improvements. So it gives us some, um, a great sense of satisfaction that, um, you know, we, we are, uh, we are, 
hitting our marks you know, in our mission. So we appreciate our investors. Finally, uh, just want to reiterate why we're here. Um, so same uh, expertise and value add large multifamily, the same uh, focus to operations and our quality of asset management, but we want to package it in a way that not only uh, reduces risk, um, but also improve on cash flows and just continue to add value in which in however we can for investors and our residents. And um, we're gonna we're gonna do this at no additional cost to you if you um, if you sign up with us over the next sixty days. All right. So next steps: sign up to our portal, uh, and you could get uh, to our portal through our website at breakadaycapital.com, or you can use a QR code um, below. Um, read all the documents. So uh, we haven't um, finalized all the documents yet. They'll be up on the portal in about uh, two weeks, hopefully less. We'll send out an email to those that have uh, registered um, and that are interested. So you can go on the portal, sign everything there, nice and easy. You'll have to do your um, accredited investor um, um, letter or or you know get the approval on the uh the website um and then um wire the funds um so nice and easy jacqueline can help you with any of those steps if you have questions about the fund uh itself uh joe will be a great person to reach out to and i'm going to share his information in a second but if you had questions about um the paperwork and whatnot jacqueline is the uh the best source and we're going to send out We've already sent out actually um, uh, about nine pages of, of FAQs uh, to go over all the questions you may have. And, and it was a great process for us to kind of go through all the different questions people will have. So make sure you read that because it'll be super helpful. Um, but we're happy to take any questions you may have. And here's Joe's information. Uh, but, but like I said, really go through the FAQs first before everyone bombards uh, with Joe with uh, questions regarding the uh, the fund. Um, and, and like I said, you can also reach Jacqueline if you have questions with the paperwork, Jacqueline at breakofdaycapital.com. Um, so we're gonna open it up to uh, some questions uh, and um, let's see what we have here. All right. So uh, the first question, has the extreme heat negatively affected any of, uh, any of our properties? No, it hasn't. I mean, during the summer, we'll get a lot more um, uh, HVAC repairs or, or new equipment. That's the norm. Um, but, you know, no, I mean, no one loves the heat uh, and it's hot. You know, we did due diligence on Spanish shells. It was 110 degrees out. But, you know, people, people are used to it there. and um um not a little too hot for me but uh you know for other people not, not a problem all right um we have one what is the month over month cash flow um so um on the deal level every deal is going to be a little bit different um if you invested in class a that's going to be 10% um, over the course of the year. Um, right now we're seeing deals that are typically about uh, four or five percent the first year, and then they go up, you know, five, six the second year. So there's good steady cash flow. If you're if you invest uh, in class B or C, that's going to really come after six months. So we're not we're not the operator that that raises money from you to pay you back month one. That's return of capital. We use it off of cash flow, and that's the difference of how we do things versus uh, some other operators. And that answers the the next question: When does the cash flow start after you commit? So, um, really, really after the uh, the uh, six month mark, we'll start having a uh, cash flow. All right, Joe, you want to take this one? When does the cash flow start after you commit capital? So, kind of, kind of answer that. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that one again. Um, so if uh, depending on which investment class uh, you're in, the uh, class A, which is the prep equity, 
you should expect um, to receive cash flow, or I should say distributions um, within uh, 30 days after closing, and that would be paid on a monthly basis. Uh, the other two, the class B and C are common equity, um, and those will be paid, um, uh, paid out on a quarterly basis, and we're expecting uh, within the first six months after closing. All right, and then we have another question, Joe. Does the 100% capital call provision endure through the life of the fund? Uh, yes, you, you should expect to, to be able to commit to the, uh, uh, the entire amount that you commit, and, and that could be as quickly as uh, day one. Um, but yes, uh, we can call 100% of the capital throughout the entire fund or not. So, you know, we're very disciplined buyers. And so um, if we can't get the deals uh, at the price that we want um, and uh, the fund closes, uh, you know, at the one year anniversary and we, you know, we have a couple of uh, six month extensions. But um, if there's not if there aren't any good deals out there, we would simply just close the fund and uh, just end up with what we have. All right. What other questions do you have? Anything else? You guys are making it easy on us tonight. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, like like uh, like we said, the uh, FAQs will be. Um, if you haven't read them, definitely check it out. We've got. I don't know, maybe maybe 50, 100 uh, questions that we answer there. If you have other questions after you watch the, the webinar, you know, definitely feel free to reach out. We want to make sure we answer all your questions. We do have another one coming in. Do you expect any further equity sources for the deals or will the fund be enough for all deals? Uh, Drew, we're going to look at that on an individual um, basis. Um, right now, our goal isn't. Um, you know, we could, uh, pref is, 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 is an option. If we wanted to go that way, certainly we'll let you know, um, you're seeing really good pref terms right now up to, you know, 13% max with power pursue. So what that does is actually help boost, uh, IRR returns. I know they're in a higher position, but, um, they, um, uh, those are really good pref, uh, pref um, options right now, but that's not something we're we're looking to do. Um, all right, any other answers? All right, Chris, any questions? All right. Uh, all right, with that question, is any potential major risk, what would cause them? So the beauty of an investing in Arizona, we don't have, I'm going to I'm going to knock on wood here. Uh we don't have the hurricanes, tornadoes, um the you know Texas freezes, you know, insurance is is relatively low compared to most of the other states because we don't have such natural disasters. Um I think people like to bring up the water issue and if 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 water is the biggest issue for this deal then man, this is a grand slam because Arizona is really smart because they look at it as a hundred year issue. And so they're working on things years and years and years way in advance. Um, I live in California where I think we're going to have problems much sooner than that. But um, Arizona, we've got many, many years of runway before water becomes an issue. And again, I'm going to knock on wood. All right. Um, here we got a question. Is the fund management fee a fixed percentage? Yeah, I can answer that one, Andrew. Um, yes, uh, yeah, it, it is a it's a one percent fixed AUM. But we are gonna waive it for the first 60 days. So take advantage. All right, next question. Have you identified the other properties in the fund and what is the timeline for acquiring them? We have some uh some deals that we like in our pipeline. Well, but there's no guarantee um, we'll agree on the price right now. We're still going to keep to our same conservative underwriting and criteria. So we're not going to just do a deal just to put it in the fund. That's, we, we don't operate that way. Um, but we are seeing some, some intriguing uh, properties. 
And so we'll be very diligent and, 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 and staying, like I said, staying true to our criteria. We're not going to overpay for, for a deal. So as we get uh, more deals in, we'll, we'll share them with the, with our investors. There you might, uh, do you want me to take Rick's, uh, Rich's question? Yeah, I can do that one. Um, hey, Rich. So yes. Um, so what, what we're expecting is that whenever a deal sells, uh, we're going to, we're going to return capital and profits to the investors. We're not going to reinvest that cash and recycle that money. Um, we, we like, putting money in our investors' pockets. Uh, speaking as a passive investor myself, there's nothing that um, showcases, you know, your operational expertise and that you're an astute investor in, and uh, a good steward of capital by putting money in investors' uh, pockets. There's, there's no other way to put it. And that's the way we're going to go. And Suresh asks, are all the properties in Arizona? Not necessarily. We've been... Uh, you know, we've done, this will be our 11th deal in Arizona, but we've been looking in Albuquerque and Vegas and Denver for over a year and a half. Um, I was speaking at a conference, uh, I guess about two weeks ago uh, at, at, uh, in Vail for the IMN Middle Market uh, Western States. And um, after speaking on a panel, Eric and I probably toured, I don't know, 10 different properties. So we are, have been looking, we do like that market. Um, but I would say the majority will probably be Arizona. We may go outside, but within that concentric circle, we're not looking, you know, to do a shotgun approach, uh, let's say in Florida or North Carolina or, um, you know, very far away. We want to be experts in the markets that we choose. Um, we're partnering with someone that's an expert in that market. We're not going to uh, jump into a market without having lots of data points. And no, we're not looking to buy properties in California. Um, we want to be, uh, you know, in landlord-friendly states. Uh, it just makes it so much easier for us, and and that's part of the criteria you'll, that we that we went over earlier. Any other questions? All right, well, I appreciate you uh, joining us and staying on throughout the whole um, webinar. We really appreciate you. We know you have other investment choices and uh, we're honored that uh, you, um, you know what we're about and, and, and want to spend your precious time with us and learning about our opportunities. So thank you. Um, well, we got one more. Uh, California, uh, Colorado is not a landlord for It's, um, it's not bad. Um, it's not like Arizona, but it's not like California. Um, so it's, it's somewhere, uh, in the middle. All right. Well, uh, appreciate it again, all of you, uh, joining us, um, have a great uh, rest of your night. And like I said, after you go through all the, um, all the material, if you have more questions regarding the, the fun and the deal, please reach out to Joe or myself. And if you have questions about the paperwork, Jacqueline will give you white glove service, walk you through everything and make it nice and easy for you. So thank you so much.